In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve the Alex problem called solving for a gaseous reactant. There are two parts to this problem. The first part is asking us to write a balanced chemical equation for a particular reaction. In this problem, the reaction that I'm writing the equation for is liquid hexane, which the formula is given to us right here, C6H14. It does say we have to include the physical state symbol, so that means you have to include the, the L for liquid. Um, so this is the combustion of liquid hexane. Combustion means that you are reacting with oxygen gas, O2. So there isn't anything that is directly telling you that this reaction is taking place with oxygen gas. You have to figure that out from the word combustion. And then it tells us that the products are gaseous carbon dioxide and gaseous water, CO2 gas and H2O gas. And this is not a balanced equation, so our first job is going to be to take care of balancing it. We've got six carbon on the left and one carbon on the right, so we'll put a six right here for the CO2. We have 14 hydrogen on the left and we have two on the right, so we'll put a seven here for the H2O, now we have 14. And then for the oxygen, we have 12 plus 7 is 19. That's an odd number of oxygen. We've, we've balanced quite a bit of combustion problems before, so the easiest way to address this is to just go back to the beginning, change the coefficient of hexane to 2. So now we have 12 carbon atoms, so we want 12 CO2 molecules. And we have 28 hydrogen atoms, so we want 14 H2O molecules. And now in terms of the number of oxygen, we have 24 plus 14 is 38, which means 19 O2 molecules. And that's, I'm just gonna double check that because it's kind of early in the morning for me. 38 divided by two is 19. So here is our balanced equation. And this is going to be the answer to this first part of the problem. Now, the second part of the problem is giving us a stoichiometry problem. We know that it's a stoichiometry problem because it's giving us some information about the hexane and it is asked, asking us to calculate the volume of carbon dioxide gas. So again, anytime that it's giving you information about one molecule and asking you to use it to calculate something about a different molecule, that's how you know you need to do a stoichiometry problem. In stoichiometry problems, you always wanna start by writing the, the thing that's been given to you, its quantity and its unit. We've been given information about 3.3 kilograms of hexane, C6H14. In order to convert from hexane to carbon dioxide gas, we need to do a multimole conversion. So our first step is going to be converting this um, hexane, C6H14, into moles. Um, before we can convert into moles, we have to get rid of the kilogram units and convert into grams. Kilo is the prefix for 10 to the 3, so there's 1,000 grams in a kilogram. That'll get rid of our kilogram units. And then we can convert from the grams of C6H14 into moles of C6H14 using their molecular weight, using the molecular weight. Six times 12 plus 14 is 86. And again, a word of warning, don't use 86 here. Don't round it. You need to use um, a more exact number here. Otherwise you risk getting the problem wrong due to rounding. I need to put a molecule here, not just mole, a mole of C6H14. So now that we're into units of moles of C6H14, we can convert from moles of C6H14 into our desired molecule, which is carbon dioxide gas. We can go into moles of CO2. This relationship comes from the coefficients in the balanced equation. CO2's coefficient is 12, and C6H14 coefficient is 2. And this is going to give us the number of moles of CO2. 0.3 times 1,000 divided by 86 times 12 divided by 2 gives me 20.93 moles of CO2. We're not asked to provide um, information about CO2 in terms of moles. The problem is asking us to provide the volume of CO2. So this is something that we're gonna get using PV equals NRT. 
rearranged V equals N R T over P, solving for volume. We just figured out the number of moles. It is 20.93. And hopefully you'll forgive me, I don't want to write the units because I just don't have a ton of room up here for fitting units. And the units of R are so big. R is 0 0.08206. And the temperature uh, is telling us 10 degrees Celsius, which we need to convert into Kelvin. So 283 Kelvin, 273 plus 10, divided by the pressure, the problem tells us is one atmosphere. I gotta stay consistent with my no units here. So this will give us 283. Um, this gives us a volume of 486 liters. And again, this would not be a good number to enter into Alex because I've rounded a couple of times. And so you would want to repeat these calculations with an exact molecular weight uh, and probably more sig figs over here on your, on your um, Kelvin. And maybe that will have an effect on this number. But this is the process that you should follow.